As you've seen in my prop shaft removal video, I have to remove this holder in order to fix some damage below. I've taken out all the screws I was able to get out. So these two that sit exactly across from each other don't, uh, don't really move. Or actually they do move, but they don't come out. And no matter how much I kick this and try to move it and try to scrape up here, I can't seem to get it out. So time to look upstairs in the rudder casing, what's going on here. Even more fun than I expected. So here inside the rudder compartment where you can see the partially disassembled rudder that uh, we had to take apart to take the prop shaft out. Underneath this plate here, you can see the big duct where the rudder is being controlled. But as you can see up front, you can see nothing. So this bulkhead is blocking access to whatever is on the inside of the nozzle mount. And there is no access hatch here. So this 1 meter 50 compartment is sealed off. Here is a bulkhead. And there inside the rudder case on the other side as well. So what do I do? Since the solution to the problem is somewhere down here in a sealed off compartment behind that bulkhead I just showed you, it's time for my trusty old friend, the endoscope camera. All right. So what I'm gonna do is put it through one of these holes that held the screws that held the seating and then check what's underneath it. And from my previous foam removal all the way up front there, I know what it looks like when there's foam in there. And it's basically straight after you go into that hole, you only see orange, like that kind of color. Um, which means that's what I'm expecting here as well. So, Let's see. And, nope, it's not orange, it's actually empty. How far does that go? That's actually quite a bit. Um, all right, so looks like this compartment is not, either not fully filled or not filled at all with foam. Um, and there seems to be something separating the lower half from the upper half, and I can't quite get the endoscope camera down there. But all right, this means that I'll try a different hole. This means that this compartment is not contributing to the buoyancy of the boat, really. Um, so no reason not to open it up and either put in buoyancy foam or use it as a storage compartment. This took an unexpected turn. Whatever happened to the stringer doesn't look great. Uh, so when I'm cutting a hole here, I have to keep this stringer in mind, even though it looks like it's seen better days already, but at least there is some structural strength to it. And then on the other side, there should also be one. So this hatch is right between two stringers, even though I can't see it exactly, I'm assuming they go straight down here. So that hatch position on this axis, at least, seems 
should be the only position that I can, uh, can put it in. This axis I can freely decide on and I'll figure out where to put it exactly given my current plans. Since this is where the stringers go, same on the other side, that's the constraint of where to cut the new hole for the new hatch. Luckily, I have two of these guys left over now, since they were originally installed, like this one still is, at the place where the really big holes are being cut, or this one has already been cut, um, for hull access, uh, taking out the foam, and eventually putting in bedrooms. So I think it's the best idea to keep using them by cutting a hole that fits relatively well. I already have one of these holes going into the gearbox compartment right here. So what I'm doing is putting a piece of cardboard on top of it and then using that as a template to cut the hole for the new hatch. Instead of elevator music while I'm drawing and then cutting this hole, I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. It helps greatly and you will never miss out on any new videos. Thanks a lot. I'm sure a bunch of you think, whoa, that's stupid. Why does he cut out the shape of the exact hatch that he wants to install? Why doesn't he just use the hatch? The reason for that is that the hatch is not the size of the hole. The hole is a bit smaller, so that's uh, two centimeters, something like one inch. Uh, the reason for that being that there is a lip that the hatch sits on. So here you can see it, the outer diameter has this type of lip on it. Um, the hole, obviously, I want to cut only as big as hatch minus lip. So that's what the template is for. I think this is where I'll cut. Uh, it's pretty far back, so uh, that with my current plan of how the bathroom is being laid out, that should be fine. Uh, so I put down the template. Luckily, I just came across something very heavy to put it into place. This part here has already been cut before and then uh, re-laminated. So I think it's the like, weaker part of the deck anyway. Uh, that should be okay. I'm staying about 10 centimeters away from the bulkhead. I'm placing it pretty much in the center of the two stringers that I've just marked. And now I'm putting this down and marking where exactly I'm going to cut. While I'm kneeling and walking on here, you can notice how much the deck flexes. A little sneak peek of what's to come. So one big disadvantage this hole's position will have uh, compared to others is that the hull doesn't have a flat bottom at this point, right? Uh, so the hull basically curves up a bit uh, and, and gets less deep because there's a prop underneath and the, the rudder mount and such things. So cutting here means that I'm cutting in the shallower part of it. So it's only about 60 centimeters down. That's the disadvantage. The advantage, other than it working with the bathroom layout that I've just talked about, is that the, the actual mounting for the, for the nozzle, nozzle mounting part, so the, the metal part that I can't get off, uh, is pretty much below here. So since it's already a pretty narrow room, I think it'll be uh, advantageous to be able to directly access it from above. Uh, not only this time, but also for the future maintenance work. I found some special fiberglass blades for the jigsaw, which really helped. I'll link those in the description below. Okay, so that's a bit unexpected. 
whatever was underneath this hole was actually something mounted in a way. So like a tank or something that went down because here you can see that this is not a stringer. This is just like one uh, layer of fiberglass left over from a stringer that used to be there. So on both sides, the stringer is completely cut. It's gone. Other side, it's also gone. So whatever was in here was just wide enough that it doesn't fit between the stringers and the previous guys just basically cut through them and put something in here. I won't have you sit through another 28 minutes of me removing some buoyancy foam. I'll just let you know that I removed about two cubic meters here. This compartment is much smaller than the big ones where I'm putting the bedrooms. So less foam to remove, but at the same time, really difficult to maneuver in here. And what's below is much worse than anything I've ever had on this boat. This is a metal bracket that serves as a holder and this one is the actual prop shaft holder. So it's screwed in there and the previous owner basically dumped about 10 liters of polyester resin on top of it and then just foam filled it and completely forgot about it or wanted to forget about it. Uh, that means I need to do some archaeology and get all this resin off. Luckily my father-in-law brought some really heavy tools, in this case this device that you would normally use to break apart a house or something like that. And I've got to say confined spaces with big tools that produce a lot of heat are even more fun. Um, it's definitely easier than the manual kind of archaeology you've seen in the last shot but it's still been a hassle. Uh, the, the whole act of breaking everything apart at this point in this video here has already taken more than 10 hours of really, really physical work. So I very much hope that after I'm done with, with this one here, uh, it's not gonna happen again anytime soon that I need to remove these 10 liters-ish of resin. In order to distract myself and take a little break, I cut the hatch on the other side as well. And below the foam, it does look different. So uh, a little sneak peek with the endoscope camera shows that there hopefully isn't a botched repair job as the one on the other side. Back in the port side hull, we were still trying out every single tool I had and found out that a combination of angle grinder and the demolition tool um, does the job pretty well. After a few more hours of that, we finally got to rock bottom to some metal plates that were easier to free of resin and that meant that we could finally access the screws on, uh, on the vertical metal plate that actually held the prop shaft holder below. So started to get those off and then we could finally, finally start taking that metal piece off. So the last thing that was left were these two metal plates. So you can see a bunch of goo coming out on all sides, uh, some traces of corrosion, uh, definitely some damaged fiberglass and generally not terrible looking, but also not great. Uh, so yeah, time to get these metal plates off as well and then 
do a clean job uh, and repair whatever is below. So that part was relatively easy, a bit of wiggling around, a bit of uh, getting different tools underneath the metal plates to break the seal and off they came so that we could finally see what's below and no big crack in the fiberglass as far as I can see. There's still some sealant on but it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would be. So getting this all cleaned and repaired is the job for the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.